In this mini lecture, we'll be going over the new guidelines for hypertension that were released in November of 2017. So first, a brief, brief history of the hypertension guidelines. The last definition of hypertension was developed in 1993, and this is the one that we've been using for um, the past several years, since 1993 and that was um, systolic equal to or over 140 with diastolic being equal or over 90 um, for someone to be diagnosed with hypertension. The last guidelines that we had before these new ones were came out in 2003 and they were developed by the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute. Then 10 years later in 2013, the Institute went ahead and gave the responsibility of developing these guidelines over to the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology. So then in 2014, they developed a 21-member multidisciplinary group, and this group spent the past three years reviewing thousands of studies. So after reviewing all those studies, they were able to revise and release the new guidelines, which were released on no Monday, November 13th of 2017, so just a few weeks ago. So first we'll take a look and compare the old versus the new hypertension definitions. So for normal blood pressure, that's the same as it was previously. So um, I being around 120, below 120 systolic and below 80 diastolic. Um, and then we have this group, this new group of elevated blood pressure that's between normal and um, stage one hypertension. So the new guidelines eliminated that category of prehypertension. So patients are categorized as either having elevated blood pressure, which would be from 120 to 129 and less than 80, or having stage 1 hypertension, which would be at 130 to 139 or 80 to 89. So at these levels, individuals are at higher risks for the comorbidities of hypertension. So there are many studies that show the benefit from reducing to below these levels of blood pressure. So this is one of the reasons that this change was made. And while previous guidelines classified 140 over 90 as stage one hypertension, this level is now classified as stage two hypertension under the new guidelines. So again, the stage two hypertension has been lowered to equal to 140 or um, equal to or above 90. So you can see here and compare the changes on this slide. So this new definition of hypertension will result in nearly half of the U.S. adult population, about 46%, as having high blood pressure. And this is um, expected to have the greatest impact among younger individuals. Additionally, the prevalence of high blood pressure is expected to triple among men under age 45 and double among women under age 45. However, only a small increase is expected in the number of adults requiring antihypertensive medication. So one of the reasons this was changed because that upper end of what was previously prehypertension, um, you know, these terms weren't really liked because it still suggests that you're still okay. You're you have prehypertension, but you don't have it yet, or you're high normal, but that you're still normal. And it's clear from the information that they reviewed that if you're not normal, you're in that stage one category, you have about twice the risk of heart attack um, from somebody 
that has normal blood pressure. So this is why it was changed. You know, so that and the knowledge that lowering blood pressure in that category would be helpful to individuals. It's also important to understand whether those in stage one hypertension are at otherwise low risk for cardiovascular disease or if they're at high risk. So if they've had either a stroke or a heart attack previously, this would keep them at high risk. Um, they also have calculations that they can use to understand um, standard risk factors. So if they're at high risk, this means that they have more than a 10% chance of having a major event in the next 10 years, and those people would require more aggressive treatments. So if they're considered at low risk, then a non-drug um, or just lifestyle changes would be very sufficient and important for them to do. So there are about 30% of people in that stage one hypertension category um, that would benefit not only from a lifestyle change, but also from antihypertensive drugs as well. And these would be the ones that are at a higher risk than the others in that category. So in addition to changing the definitions of hypertension and the hypertension categories, the guidelines stress the importance of using um, a proper technique to measure blood pressure. So of course we want that to be accurate so we can accurately categorize individuals. They also recommend the use of home blood pressure monitoring using validated devices and highlight the value of appropriate training of healthcare providers to be able to determine when someone is experiencing white coat hypertension. And again, that's when people get nervous when they're at the doctors, it can raise their blood pressure so they have high readings in the doctor's office, but otherwise their readings are normal. Um, other changes include for only prescribing medication for stage one type of hypertension if the patient has already had a cardiovascular event such as a heart attack or stroke or is at high risk of heart attack or stroke based on age, the presence of diabetes, chronic kidney disease, or a calculation using atherosclerotic risk. So um, this is using the same risk calculator used in evaluating high cholesterol. So again, if they're stage one hypertension, if they're low risk, we're just going to want to be making lifestyle changes. But if they're stage one hypertension at high risk or having a previous cardiovascular event um, or at a calculated higher risk, then we would want to, in addition to lifestyle changes, um, they would probably put on, be put on an antihypertensive medication. Um, as far as the polypharmological management of blood pressure, it needs to we need to be recognizing that many people will be needing two or more types of medications to control their blood pressure, and that people may take um, their pills more consistently if multiple medications are combined into a single pill. That way they're taking less pills overall. So of course this is something that we'll need to be aware of um, what they're taking for any food drug um, medication interactions as well. And then finally, the guidelines also recommend for us to be identifying socioeconomic status and psychosocial stress as factors for high blood pressure that should be considered in a patient's care plan. So again, looking at the patient overall, um, not just what's going on medically, but what's going on overall in their lives that can affect their medical conditions. So this has been um, a review of the updated 2017 guidelines. Um, I'll, there will be a link posted on Beachboard so that you can review the guidelines yourself and have those available for you.